Hey guys, Ryan with Cycle News. We got a really fun bike comparison for you today. These are two bikes that are absolutely legendary in the motorcycle industry and have been around as long as I can remember. It's the XR650L versus the DR650S. Now, before we get into this video, I just wanna remind you guys to head over to cyclenews.com. You can find a full write-up and spec sheets, photos of these bikes, all racing news and anything in the two-wheel world. You can find that at cyclenews.com and our free digital magazine available every Tuesday at cyclenews.com for free or it'll sign up in your email and it'll end up in your inbox, like I said, for free. So check that out and then let's get into the video. Now the XR650 and the DR650 are both bikes that date back kind of to the 70s, that's where their roots really originate, and neither bike has seen major updates in the last couple of decades. These bikes are super versatile, easy on the wallet, and serve as a really good bike as a starter bike for a rally build, an adventure bike, or just a fun dual sport commuter. They are marketed as a dual sport bike and really designed for, yeah, like commuting and some light off-road trail use. Um, they both are very similar in some ways, but also very different. These two bikes are obviously legends in the motorcycle industry and serve as really good bikes as a solid base for a build. And I'm sure you've seen a thousand of these things built to the gills, uh, just being ridden anywhere and everywhere. They both feature a 644cc single cylinder four stroke engine with a five speed gearbox and a cable actuated clutch. There's no really anything fancy on these bikes. There's no ABS, there's no digital dash to be had, there's no quick shift, there's no hydraulic clutch, nothing. It's pretty basic. Both bikes are very simple um, and they've been this way for a long time now. So the engine on the XR is a dry sump design, which means it's a smaller engine compared to the DR and that allows it to have a higher ground clearance than the DR almost three inches to be exact. The XR sits with a ground clearance of 13 inches and the DR has a ground clearance of only 10.4 inches. The Honda also sits up a lot higher than the Suzuki. The XR seat height is 37 inches while the DR's is only 34.8 and the DR can actually be lowered even further than that for a smaller, lower ride height. This also equates to almost a 20 pound difference between the XR and the DR. The XR is almost 20 pounds lighter than the Suzuki. They also both have conventional forks and disc brakes. Moving into a couple of differences, the Suzuki actually has a larger fuel tank at 3.4 gallons compared to the XR's 2.8 gallon fuel tank. So you'll be getting a lot more miles out of the Suzuki than you will with the Honda. Along with the taller ground clearance and seat height, the Honda has an 18 inch rear wheel where the Suzuki has a 17 inch rear wheel. Both bikes have the classic wide, big comfy seats which are comfortable to ride for on long distances or commuting on the street or riding from the street to your favorite trail but the seats and the ride positions don't encourage you to stand and really attack the trails. And these old school 80s style foot pegs don't help with that either. The DRs however are rubber mounted and they actually have some flex to them. So as you stand and absorb some of the bumps that actually helps and they can both use some aftermarket pegs after you ride these things, even just for a few miles. Both engines, like I said, are very similar. They are very torquey engines. They're just tractors of a motor. They don't rev a lot, they don't spin up real quick. They're just luggable, fun, easy to ride engines. And from the factory, they come geared to go pretty fast. They're built to ride on the highways from the factory. So if you're really gonna take these things off-road riding and more aggressive style trail riding, you're gonna wanna bump up a few teeth in the rear sprocket just to get a little bit of extra spin up from those uh, low revs and get it to get the motor to wake up a little bit as you attack some of these uphills. Like we mentioned earlier, the displays on these bikes are very simple. There's no digital dash, there's no fuel light, no fuel gauge, no anything like that. So they're very simple. Obviously you can get some of these aftermarket components and put them on there like a GPS or a tachometer, however you wanna call it. But from the factory, you don't get anything like that. You're gonna have to rely on the petcock and the reserve function to preserve your ride a little bit longer. A few more differences, the XR has a, actually a pretty good fork. It's a 44 millimeter Showa fork with compression adjustment, but no rebound. So you can actually get in there and kind of dial in your settings a little bit more compared to the DR where it actually has about one inch less travel. Um, that's because it's a lower seat height, lower ground clearance. The bike is overall lower to the ground. So you do sacrifice a little bit of suspension with that. So if we had to pick a winner for these two bikes, the DR is actually gonna win. But there's a few differences here that actually make it a winner. We really liked it for its smooth power and the lower seat height and lower center of gravity actually made it a little bit easier to ride, we thought. You could really slide it in and kind of push the bike to its limits um, on the trails actually. The 650 or 644cc engine, you're not really gonna tap that thing out on the trails, especially with these kind of 
intermediate tires that are built for a little bit of trail and some more street. So those things are, you're not gonna be really attacking the trail per se. The DR650 is a super fun to ride. It's really fun to play on and we really enjoyed the smooth power character. The XR on the other hand would definitely win in the suspension department. The suspension on the XR is just better all around. You have more travel, better suspension function, um, but the taller ride height just made it feel really tippy, like you would tip it over. And especially for somebody who isn't as tall, you're not gonna wanna ride an XR. Where on the other hand, a taller guy riding the DR where it's actually a little smaller, maybe you can actually pull that off, right? You could be a taller guy riding a smaller bike, not so much being a smaller guy riding a taller bike. You also can't help but mention that the XR is known to be simply bulletproof. Both of these bikes, they've been around forever. There's a reason they keep selling these bikes. They've been around forever and they'll continue to be around until anything changes, right? These bikes are just legendary. They are known for their reliability and just bulletproof nature. These two bikes are absolutely a blast to ride, whether you're commuting back and forth, whether you're starting out riding dual sports, and you don't want something as aggressive as say a 450L or something along those lines where it's got more of a motocross nature. These bikes are a very good trail bike, a fun family bike, something that you're gonna do with your buddies, um, but maybe ride a little bit of dual sport and some commuting. You've, you've seen guys ride these things on with supermoto setups or drag setups. I mean, there's so many different kinds of bikes um, that these are based off of. So these are two absolutely super fun bikes and we just had an absolute blast riding both of them. We hope you guys enjoy this video. There's obviously a few differences between these bikes and these two bikes don't really get put head to head very often. As always, be sure to like, follow and subscribe. Check out the Cycle News Magazine where you can find everything on this test. Written, photos, spec sheet, all that for free at cyclenews.com. We also have a free digital magazine available every Tuesday night at cyclenews.com as well. You can sign up for our email and get it delivered straight to your inbox for free. Thank you guys, and until next time, we'll see you out on the trail.